Section five of The Diary of a Country Parson by James Woodford. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain, read by John Greenman. 1763. January 4th. Went a skating this morning upon the River Thames. With an interval of a thaw from 7th through 10th, he skates on the Thames till January 27th. On January 24th, we skated down to Abington, where we dined, and for our dinners there, etc., each of us paid two shillings, sixpence. We were going down about an hour and a half, and B, we walked above two miles out of it. It is about ten miles by water. January 8th. Paid rice for mending my gown and a little rip in my coat, one shilling, which is very exorbitant indeed, and for the future will have nothing ever done by him any more in the world. February 17th. I dined at the chaplain's table with Pickering and Waring, upon a roasted tongue and udder, and we went on each of us for it one shilling ninepence. N.B. I shall not dine on a roasted tongue and udder again very soon. February 28th. Went with Dyer, Russell, and Master, after dinner, down to the castle to see the prisoners where we drank two bottles of port, and for wine, etc., paid one shilling sixpence. William Cartwright, a young, good-looking fellow who is in the castle for a highway robbery, drank with us the last bottle, and smoked a pipe with us, and seemed very sorry for what he had committed. We gave him between us two shillings. March 29th. Went and saw peace proclaimed in High Street at twelve o'clock. This was the peace of paris which concluded the seven years war the french gave up canada to us and abandoned all claims to india we had become a great imperial power may second sale spoke to me this morning concerning the curacy of newton purcell which i have promised him to take and serve the sunday after trinity sunday it is about twenty miles from oxford and i am to receive per annum for serving it besides surplus fees, twenty-eight pounds. I am only to serve it during Mr. Sale's proctorship. May 5th. This is the Thanksgiving Day for the late peace between France, Spain, and England. May 11th. I was offered this afternoon by Fitch of Queen's College a curacy worth forty pounds per annum, and to be entered upon at Michaelmas. It is in Somerset, near Taunton. The name of the place is Thurlexton, in the gift of Fitch's father. I shall write to my father concerning it tomorrow morning. I have got to the twentieth of this month to consider of it. May 23rd. I went this afternoon at five o'clock to C.C.C., to Mr. Hewish, the bishop of Oxford chaplain, before whom I was examined for deacon's orders, and I came off very well. I was set over in the middle of the fifth chapter of St. Paul to the Romans, and construed that chapter quite to the end. I was quite half an hour examining. He asked a good many hard and deep questions. I had not one question that yes or no would answer. Mr. Hewish is a very fair examiner, and will see whether a man be read or not soon. May 24th. Breakfast in my own rooms again took a ride this morning towards Ellsfield and round by Staunton upon the Grey. For half a pint of ale at Boy's Water, paid one pence. Gave Jackson's other man for taking care of the grey and saddle, etc., sixpence. For fruit, paid one pence. For wine on the green, paid two shillings. The reason of my paying so much was the impudence of two gentlemen-like persons, whose names were Messrs. Mercer and Lloyd, pushed themselves into the temple in our garden while Hook and myself were drinking there, and drank two bottles of wine with us. Mercer's wife and two more ladies were with us. Mercer, who wore a gold-laced hat, was very drunk, and very abusive to us and Mr. Lloyd. Lloyd is a schoolmaster at Abington, and Mercer's son went to school to him. Mercer's son was with us. Mercer went away about ten o'clock this evening, and made a great noise going through college. Mr. Mercer behaved very much unlike a gentleman. Lloyd gave into the B.C.R. afterwards with Hook and myself. Mr. Lloyd was drunk. 
Mercer broke two glasses in the temple for which Hook and myself paid one shilling. I went to bed at eleven and left Mr. Lloyd in the B.C.R. with Hook and some more gentlemen. May 27th, for an ounce of green tea, paid eightpence. For an ounce of bohea tea, paid fourpence. May 28th, went to Dr. Hunt's of Christ Church with Nichols, Gree, and Pitters, and subscribed to the thirty-nine articles before the bishop. We paid Pope Beaver for our letters of orders, which we received Monday next in Dr. Hunt's rooms, each of us ten shillings. Oglander, Sr., gave a very handsome glazed lanthorn for the use of the bowlers to light their pipes with this afternoon in the temple in the green. May 29th. At nine o'clock this morning went to Christ Church with Hook and Pitters to be ordained deacon, and was ordained deacon there by Hume, Bishop of Oxford. There were twenty-five ordained deacons and thirteen priests. We all received the sacrament. We were in Sea Church Cathedral from nine o'clock this morning till after twelve. For wine this afternoon in the B.C.R. paid sixpence. June 1st, I took my B.A. degree this morning. Reynolds, myself, Lucas, Peckham, and Weber treated, as is usual, the B.C.R. after dinner with wine and after supper with wine and punch all the evening. We had twenty-seven people in the B.C.R. this evening. I sat up in the B.C.R. this evening till after twelve o'clock, and then went to bed, and at three in the morning had my outward doors broken open, my glass door broke, and pulled out of bed and brought into the B.C.R., where I was obliged to drink and smoke, but not without a good many words. Peckham broke my doors, being very drunk, although they were open, which I do not relish of Peckham much. June 2nd. Several of our fellows went at four o'clock in the morning for stow, and all drunk, some in a phaeton, some in a buggy, and some on horseback. I went as far as Weston on the Green with them upon my gray, and then returned home, and was home by nine o'clock this morning, and breakfast in my room. June 4th, dined in hall, and after dinner went with Cotton to Newton Purcell, my curacy, and which I am to serve to-morrow supped and spent the evening at cotton's mother's with cotton and his brother and his mother and his four sisters cotton's sisters are very agreeable ladies laid at cotton's mother's at newton purcell cotton's mother's house and furniture is rather bad they are going out of the house soon june fifth breakfast at cotton's mother's with cotton and his brother and his four sisters at eleven o'clock went to my church and read prayers and preached my first sermon. Cotton's family and about twenty more people were all that were at the church. Did duty again at two o'clock, and then dined at Cotton's mother's with Mrs. Cotton and her four daughters and her youngest son. The eldest son was out preaching and reading prayers. Set out this afternoon for Oxford and got home about eight o'clock. Gave Cotton's maid, being the only servant, one shilling. June 6. Had a letter from Fitch, with a promise from his father of my taking the curacy of his at Thurlixton near Taunton. June 25. Oglander, Jr., and myself tried this evening some of our strong beer in the BCR, and it is pretty good, but I am afraid it will never be better. It is some of Whitmore's brewing when he was bursar. June 29th for the pocket-pistol alias a dram-bottle to carry in one's pocket, it being necessary on a journey or so at Nichols, paid one shilling. July 3rd. Went this morning to Artington by wantage in Berks for Mr. Sheffield, who desired me to change churches with him for this Sunday. It is about twelve miles of Oxford. I preached and read prayers there in the morning, and churched a woman, and read prayers there in the afternoon. Coming out of church in the morning, a woman that I had churched gave me in the middle of the church sixpence, which I received and pocketed. I dined at the squire's, whose name was Clark, who behaved extremely civil and genteel indeed. For going through three turnpikes this morning between Oxford and Ardington, paid fivepence. 
my horse fell down on a trot as i was going and threw me over his head but i thank god almighty i received no hurt july sixteenth for throwing some wine last night in bedford's face in the b c r i was sconced a bottle of wine which i paid this evening to the b c r july twenty sixth paid bags at the cough house a very impudent fellow a little bill of six shillings sevenpence n b i do not intend dealing with him again very soon for his impudence to me yesterday morning august third spent the evening at rice's my quondam tailor with himself and wife in high street they had provided a handsome supper for me viz a neck of lamb and tarts but i had supped at college i smoked a pipe with mr rice and finished a bottle of wine between us and his wife and then i departed august seventeenth dined in hall at the high table upon a neck of venison and a breast made into pasty a ham and fowls and two pies it is a venison feast which we have once a year about this time two bucks one year and one buck another year is always sent from wadham chase and divided between the wardens the senior fellows and us for an ounce of indian bark to put into my pipe when smoking paid sixpence it gives the tobacco a pretty smell and taste august twenty first went to chesterton again this morning and did the duty of the day there dined at mr pryor's again and with him his brother the lawyer his sister and niece and mr and mrs weaver miss goff mr payne a baker at brackley an everlasting sponger but a droll fellow and mr banks of our college the reference to the presence of a baker at this highly respectable tea-party we take it mr pryor himself was a person of some social standing he was certainly an educated man for he had been at winchester college with the diarist's father is a little surprising to modern notions as we shall come across other instances later on of a similar mingling of classes it may be well to consider the matter until the time of the industrial revolution towards the end of the eighteenth century english society was essentially feudal it is true that the feudal framework in its political and economic aspects had almost wholly disappeared but the social conception the conception of mankind as arranged in completely separate classes remained so rooted and universal was the class conception that any other notion seemed merely repulsive there had been spasmodic stirrings of a new spirit in the middle ages and later the peasants revolt for instance and more obviously during the cromwellian period but these stirrings were followed by a return to the old tranquillity chaucer's canterbury pilgrims ride happily down the road in complete inequality and in complete harmony for it is not the existence of class but the consciousness of its existence which creates that most insidious social disease snobbery and snobbery is relatively a modern disease though there are earlier instances of it of which the following is one the duchess of buckingham is writing to the countess of huntingdon the friend of whitefield and founder of the famous connection i thank your ladyship for the information concerning the methodist preachers their doctrines are most repulsive and strongly tinctured with impertinence and disrespect towards their superiors in perpetually endeavoring to level all ranks and do away with all distinctions it is monstrous to be told that you have a heart as sinful as the common wretches that crawl on the earth this is highly offensive and insulting and i cannot but wonder that your ladyship should relish any sentiments so much at variance with high rank and good feeling note quoted in the church of england in the eighteenth century page one hundred and twenty four by alfred plummer d d nineteen o nine the disease is developing very fast in jane austen's day assumes fearful proportions in the victorian era and shows but superficial signs of abatement in these last georgian days the political spirit of the eighteenth century was based not on the equality but on the harmony of classes so says mr george trevelyan 
and the statement applies, with even greater force, to the social spirit. Therefore, although most unfortunately the majority of the nominal gentry do not ask their baker to tea today, or entertain the neighboring farmer to supper, or dine with their tailor, we must not be surprised if that wholly admirable custom prevailed in the days of the diarist. It is indeed a remarkable paradox that the unquestioned acceptance of inequality should lead to fraternity. We return to the diary. September 3rd. Went this morning to Drayton, two little miles beyond Abingdon, and talked with Mrs. Bacon about serving that church tomorrow. She says that she will give me half a guinea, a dinner, and stabbing for my horse. Therefore I promised her that I would serve it tomorrow and the next Sunday. Mrs. Bacon behaved very handsome to me. She has a school of twenty-two young ladies after drinking a glass of mountain and eating a bit of crust of bread i returned to oxford and dined at new college in ye hall mrs bacon pressed me to dine with her but i had ordered in hall and i could not besides our common dinner we had a brace of birds called grouse that came from williams jr out of wales as a present to weber for reading for him during his absence in chapel september seventh had three bottles of wine out of my room in ye bcr this afternoon and waring had another out of his room waring was very drunk and bedford was but little better n b i was very sober as i had made a resolution never to get drunk again when at jerry's rooms in april last when i fell down dead and cut my occiput note i e the back of his head very bad indeed on September 12th he leaves Oxford, having completed his course. He spends the rest of the month quietly at home with one or two excursions to Sherburn and Bristol. He preaches for his father now and again at Ansford, does a little shooting, training a new dog given him by his tenant's brother, whose name is Snook, and with his family visits Mr. Hoare, the banker's gardens at Storton. The Temple of Hercules in the gardens must cost Mr. Hoare ten thousand pounds. It is excessively grand. The grotto where the sleeping nymph laid struck me much more than anything there. He gives his sister, Jenny, October 1st, a present of four hundred needles, four papers of pins, and two steel-top thimbles, which he had bought at Oxford for her for four shillings tuppence. On October 7th he sets out for Thurlaxton near Taunton to take up his curacy. He arrives on the 8th, and after various vain attempts to find lodgings, he goes to the squire of the parish, whose name is Cross, and he took me at the very first word, and likewise my horse. He arranges to stop there on these terms, that I should live as he does, which is very well, I am sure, that I should have my linen washed by him and that he should keep my horse, corn accepted, twenty-one pounds, and that for every day that I was absent I should be allowed for each day one shilling one and a half pence, which per year is twenty-one pounds. He notes that Mr. Cross has a noble house good enough for any nobleman. Mr. Cross is married and has three children, and another is coming. He spends his time partly at Thurluxton, with the Crosses, and partly at Ansford, riding to and fro. On October 27th, a hare being found near here, Mr. Cross and myself went out and coursed it before breakfast, and killed it, with Mr. Cross's dogs, and a good course it was. Gave the man that found her sixpence, as is always customary. He notes on November 4th that he has to return to Thurluxton from Ansford tomorrow, being the 5th of November, to read prayers there, the congregation was small. The ringers desired me to give them something to drink, it being customary. Therefore I sent them, it being a custom, one shilling. November 6th, breakfast, dined, supped, and laid at Mr. Cross's. Read prayers and preached this morning at my church of Thurluxton, it being Sunday. I likewise read prayers there this afternoon. After the afternoon service I privately baptized Mrs. Cross's late, i.e. lately born, child, which was a boy, and by the name of Richard, in Mrs. Cross's bedroom in this house. 
one farmer major of this parish spent the afternoon and evening here drinking with mr cross all the time neither of them eat any supper and i left them drinking when i went to bed which was about ten november sixteenth i lent dr clark a pamphlet called a sure guide to hell this evening and a very good moral book it is taken properly on november twenty ninth he arranges with the old rector of babkery for the curacy of that place it being only six miles from ansford at five pounds a quarter the surplus fees easter offerings and free use of parsonage gardens and stables etc he is to give up thurlaxton curacy on january ninth next on december fifth he receives seven letters applying for his vote in connection with the election of a new warden of winchester college as all wardens of winton college are elected by the fellows of new college the election was to be at new college on the tenth december accordingly he sets out for oxford on the seventh he is much solicited at oxford for his vote by the three candidates hayward lee and sale all of new college he decides to vote for sale and secondly for mr lee he gives an elaborate description of the election on december tenth in new college chapel fifty-four fellows were present and after morning service received the sacrament before proceeding to elect the sub-warden then read the statute de elezione custodis collegii prope winton then five scrutators were chosen and went up to the altar to a table within the rails and then began the scrutiny and we all in turns voted for a warden finally lee was elected he returns to ansford on december fourteenth december twenty sixth two of mr cross's tenants one a farmer and the other a tailor and miller supped and spent the evening with us they lay at mr cross's this night on december thirtieth he rides over to babkery to see his new cure he sees farmer bower apparently the principal parishioner who is much vexed to hear there is only to be one service on sunday woodford agrees to have two if his salary is increased to thirty pounds per annum end of section five seventeen sixty three